Hi everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to discuss about how to complete your digital passenger declaration. As most of you might be aware, the Australian government has recently made a change where in the past people were needing to complete Australian travel declaration, also known as ATD. Now from 18th of February onwards, we need to complete DPD, which is digital passenger declaration. So in this video, we'll show you how to complete it. Now, please be mindful that we are not working for Department of Home Affairs and this video will just give you a step by step guide as an example. Your circumstances could be different. So please make sure you choose the options according to your own personal circumstances. So without wasting any further time, let's go straight to how to complete this form. So first thing first, we go to this page, which is dpd.homeaffairs.gov.au. Make sure it's a government website when you're signing in now uh, once you have come to this page you can read through this information before you get started that's all this information to read now if it's the first time you're coming here you will need to create a new account if you're returning back obviously you can sign in but if it's the first time you will need to create a new account so click on this create account with browser on the next page you will see that there are terms and conditions that you'll have to read through so make sure you read through all this information and once you have read through all this and understood it, press I agree and then get started. Now you will need to set up your account. So make sure you enter your email address, a username, the password, and then you enter your first name, surname. And if you have a phone number in Australia or in your own country, you can enter that here and your preferred contact method, phone or email. Now I would personally select email here because uh, especially if you're traveling phone numbers if you don't have that uh, facility where you're carrying your phone number from overseas much easier to have it sent all this information or contact through email and once you have completed your personal details then you need to press continue after this now once you have pressed this next button you will get a eight digit verification code in your email make sure you copy it from your email address and paste that eight digit code here once you have entered that, then you can press continue after that. Now you have logged into your own account and here you can create your new DPD. So what we need to do next is to click on this new DPD button and start our new DPD. So it says before you provide your passport, make sure you have your passport, vaccine certificate, test results with you and image to upload. Now make sure that you bring the passport that you will be using for traveling to Australia. And if you're a dual citizen, please use your Australian passport. After you've read this, press continue. Now the next thing will be, we need to find your flight details. So in this section, we need to put our flight number and flight departure date. Now, if you can't find the flight number, then you can do it manually as well. So if you can't find it, you can click on this to find the details of your flight. But in this case, let's look up for our flight so in this case let's put our flight number let's see if it comes up or not press search after this so there is one result that they have found so you can select this option now once you have confirmed and reviewed the flight details are these the correct details then if it's correct then select confirm now it says the information collection consent is here that how they are collecting this information and how they will be using this information as well and the declarations so please make sure you read this information very carefully and once you read through all the information press i agree or if you don't agree then i press i do not agree so i'm selecting i agree after reading through this information the next thing is you need to provide your passport so either you can upload a photo where you can upload a JPEG files, PNG files up to five megabytes. Or if you don't have all the details ready or you don't have a photo ready right away, you can enter your passport details manually as well. So if you come here, you, you need to put your family name, your given name, your passport number, your nationality, your date of birth, your gender, date of issue when the passport was issued, date of expiry when the passport is expiring and the country of issue and then you'll need to upload an image after that so let's quickly fill through these details 
And once you have put the details, confirm and continue. Now it says add your travel history. Have you been or will you be in any other country in the 14 days prior to your flight to Australia? So if you have been to other countries, then you have to select yes. And then they will ask you which country have you visited. Then you have to select the country that you have visited in the last 14 days. Or if you are going to visit, then you should select this option as a yes. If you're not visiting any country, you can just select no here and then press continue. The next thing will be the planned movement, which is first thing is about transit in Australia. Are you transiting through Australia to another country? So if you're coming to Australia just for a transit purposes, then you would say yes. Now, if you have selected yes, it will ask you if you're transiting to another country, select the time you will be here in transit. And final destination, where you will be going after visiting Australia. Now, the next thing will be depart expected departure port, which port you will be departing from Australia. So select the airport you will be departing from and when the expected date of departure from Australia is. Now, if you're not transiting to another country, then select no. The next part is interstate travel. So within 14 days after arriving in Australia or within 14 days of leaving quarantine, do you intend to travel to another state? So if you are arriving in, let's say in Sydney and you are going to travel to Brisbane after that, so that will be a transiting into another state. But if you're not, then select no. And if you are, then obviously you need to select which other city or state are you traveling to. So depending upon your situation, select yes or no. The next one is travel intent. Do you intend to live in Australia for next 12 months? So whatever purpose you are coming in, if you are going to stay in Australia for more than 12 months, then select yes. If you're not, then you're going to select no in here. All right. Let's say in this case, an international student is coming into Australia. So we'll select yes. The next part is, are you migrating permanently? Are you a visitor or temporary entrant? Or are you resident returning to Australia? Depending upon your situation, for example, if we are giving an example of an international student, there will be visitor or temporary entrant. And the next question will be your intended length of stay in Australia. How long would you be living in Australia? So depending upon your visa, you can select how many years, months you're going to stay. Your country of residence, which country do you come from? What's your main reason of travel? You can select one of these options, whether it's business, convention, conferences, visiting friends, employment, education, exhibition, holiday, or others. So in this case, if you are taking an example of international student, we can choose education and occupation. Depending upon your occupation, you can write that here. And press continue. The next part is about intended address in Australia. So you need to enter the address you will be living in Australia. So enter your address in this box. And if the address is not coming up, you can also enter the address manually here as well. Once you have entered the details, then you need to enter the contact details in Australia. If you haven't got an Australian phone number, you can add a phone number from overseas as well. And then you enter your email address and then preferred contact method, whether phone, or whether email as i said it will be better if you choose email just because sometimes you don't have access to phone numbers right away in a new country so it might be better for you to choose email in this case the next one is emergency contact details if you have any friend or family member in australia you can put their details here if you don't have any friend or family member in australia you can choose your overseas emergency contact details as well once you have put all the details in then press confirm and continue now the next stage will be to review your trip details. Make sure that you have completed all these sections. So we have flight details, passenger identity details, travel history, plan movements and contact details. If you want, you can change these details, any of these details. And if you want to complete rest of your section later, you can just save and exit. But if you want to submit, then press submit trip. Now the notification will come up. It will say you will only be able to amend your contact details once you have submitted your trip. So 
once you are sure that the details are correct you can press continue now the next part will be about quarantine details so let's continue with the quarantine details now so here you have a quarantine declaration it says that your quarantine declaration will be shared with the state and territories in line with our privacy policy make sure that you choose the correct option given here so the penalties apply for breaching state and territories health orders which quarantine arrangement applies to you on your arrival in australia you have to select the right option it says please review the requirements of the state or territory of your arrival prior to answering this question detailed information is available at this link if you click on this link it will bring us to a page where there's an Australian government website. You have information for international travelers. You can choose any of the state you're arriving in, whether you're arriving in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, Tasmania, whichever state or territory you're arriving in. You can select this option and then you can read through the information for each state or territory. Now, once you have confirmed the details of quarantine requirements of the state or territory you are arriving in, if you read through this line, it says, I have checked the quarantine requirements of a jurisdiction of first arrival and any other domestic jurisdiction I intend to travel to. I have made quarantine arrangements prior to my travel where required. So you have to select one of these options. Now, if you are required to stay in a government managed quarantine, you'll have to select this option it will depend upon the state or territory you're arriving in and if a state requires that you should do a government managed quarantine you have to select that option and then you have to provide more details like do you wish to quarantine with any other passengers if yes how many passengers will be there in your hotel quarantine one two you have to select if you're coming with the family will you require any medical or other assistance while you are in quarantine press yes or no based on your situation and if yes what type of medical or other assistance you might need for example do you need to see a doctor do you have any pre-existing medical condition any prescription medication mobility aids mental health condition pregnancy caring for baby any allergies um, interpreter and any other assistance you require you have to select yes or no based on your situation in this case if you are selecting uh, other quarantine arrangements including home quarantine so if you need to do home quarantine you select this option and quarantine free travel if you are fully vaccinated and um, you're arriving in certain states where you, you don't have to quarantine at all then you select this option now if you select this then you press continue after that so there is a quick review here that there are penalties if you breach the states or health territory orders make sure again if you are not sure, you can check the details on each state and territory. Now, we're not saying which state or territory is quarantine free for a specific reason because these things change quite often. So we highly recommend you to check this link here, which says states and make sure you check the detailed requirement of quarantine for state you're arriving in at the time you're arriving in as well. We are not sure when you will be watching this video, the quarantine requirement changes so often that saying that one state is quarantine free today they may not be quarantine free tomorrow so hope you understand that these requirement changes by the australian government and you need to abide by those changes and if you want you can change or amend it otherwise you can save and exit or press submit last part is about your health declaration and so far if you want to see you can print your dpd summary here as well or you can view your dpd summary as well the last part is about your health information so let's complete that section now now it says health declaration only opens 72 hours prior to your departure so please note that you can start this form doing seven days before your flight departure but this health declaration form only opens 72 hours before your departure so you literally cannot complete this form until 72 hours before your departing time now it, it again very important that you provide your correct health declaration here so your health declaration will be shared with the state and territory authorities in line with our privacy policy 
Now please read through this information. It says before you travel, you must present a proof of negative COVID-19 PCR or uh, NAT test within three days of your flight or a medical certificate as evidence of negative rapid antigen test taken under medical supervision within 24 hours before your flight scheduled departure to Australia. So make sure that you provide a negative proof of your COVID-19 testing, whether it is PCR or a rat test, you'll need to do these tests before arriving in. You must have a negative result as well. So if you want more information or if you think you're exempt, then you need to click on this health.gov.au link and you can read further about the pre-departure testing. So let's go through with this health declaration now. And the first point says, in the three days before the day of your flight to Australia was scheduled to commence, have you been exposed without adequate personal protective precautions to a person who have tested positive for COVID-19? So have you been recently exposed in last three days before your flight to a person who have tested positive for COVID-19? If yes, you need to select yes option here. If no, then no. Have you tested positive to COVID-19 in seven days before your planned departure for Australia? Or are you currently experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19 such as fever, sore throat or a cough? Based on your situation, if you have got such symptoms or if you were tested within seven days before your departure, you need to select yes or no. Now next part is, are you an Australian citizen, permanent resident or immediate family member? If you are, then select yes. If you're not, then select no. Has a doctor ever told you that you had COVID-19 or have you ever tested positive for COVID-19? need to provide the details here again yes and if you were positive for COVID-19 you need to provide the month and the year of your diagnosis and what country were you in when you had COVID-19 so you need to choose here when you were diagnosed with COVID-19 and which country were you in if you are no then you select no option over here and if it says that giving false information or misleading information to Australian government is a serious offence, so you have to select one of these following options. It says that I am exempt from Australia's COVID-19 testing requirements or I was tested for COVID-19 prior to my departure in accordance with Australian government requirements and received a negative test result. So whatever option applies to you, whether you're exempt, whether you have tested negative, you select that. And then you have to also declare that you're fully vaccinated with an Australian approved COVID-19 vaccine as well. The list of COVID-19 vaccines that are approved in Australia, you can read all about them by clicking this link here. And I have evidence to support this. My last dose of the COVID-19 vaccine was at least seven days before the day of my flight is scheduled to commence. So make sure that your last dose of vaccine was at least seven days before your flight. If you have, then select yes, and then press continue after that. Now here you need to provide your vaccination details. Make sure you include all the doses, including the booster you have received before leaving this page. So you need to provide your vaccination certificate here. Then you press add, add your Australian issued international vaccine certificate, or you can enter your details manually here. If you want to enter your manual details here, you can fill out those COVID-19 vaccination form details with your name, your date of birth, the passport, the date of vaccination when you got vaccinated, those number, what number was it? One first vaccination or the second, uh, what country you got vaccinated, which brand were you vaccinated with, was the batch number, and the center administer where it was administered this dose and disease or agent targeted. And you can upload your vaccination certificate here as well. Once you have uploaded all the details, then you can save and press next. And then you need to provide your COVID-19 test results on the next page. So here you will need to upload the information regarding your COVID-19 test results. So what type of test was taken? 
was it NAT or PCR or RAT? What was the outcome of your COVID-19 test negative? When was the test conducted? Which country the test was conducted? And place where COVID-19 test was conducted. And then you can upload your documents here and confirm and continue. Once you have uploaded all your test result details, then press save and next. And the last thing would be to submit your health information, which includes your declaration, vaccination details, and your test details. And once you complete it, press submit after that. Now, once you have completed that part as well, congratulations, you have completed all parts of your digital passenger declaration. That includes information regarding your trip, your quarantine details, and health information. Now you can print out this document, which we highly recommend you to do so. This is always good to have a hard copies with these sort of documents. It says at the top, attention, you should print or download this page and store it safely for use when requested on your day of travel. Ensure you have evidence of your negative COVID-19 test and vaccination information for presentation before boarding. So make sure you download this page, you print it out, keep it with you and bring along with you as well. As we mentioned earlier, things that we have selected may not be applicable to you. So make sure you select the correct options as per your own personal circumstances. And that's how you complete your digital passenger declaration. Well, we hope you find this information useful. We got plenty of other content that can be helpful for you when you're arriving in Australia. Things like how to link your overseas vaccination certificate to IHI. And if you are an international student who are coming to Australia for studies, we got plenty of content on our channel as well. So make sure to check other videos on our channel. And if you want more information regarding this DVD, we highly recommend you to check the Department of Home Affairs website. This form is completely free. You do not need to pay any money for this form. And as we mentioned earlier, you can get started to complete this form seven days before your departure to Australia. But you must complete this form within 72 hours of your flight. As there is a health information that needs to be completed within 72 hours of your flight. If you do find any value within this video, please make sure to share it with your friends. And please make sure to like it as well and subscribe to the channel for more updates and videos like this. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.